this high inflation is not going to go away. It's not going to go away anytime soon. In fact, it's not going to go away anytime in this decade. We have a lot of inflation in the pipeline, and we have yet to really begun to deal with it. Most people think that we're only suffering from the monetary policy mistakes made after COVID. And if the Fed had simply started hiking rates sooner and stopped doing QE sooner, we wouldn't be experiencing all this inflation. No, we would be experiencing all this inflation because the mistakes started decades before. We are paying the price for monetary policy mistakes Going back into the early 1990s or even late 1980s, it's not simply the mistakes that were made after 2020. It was all the mistakes that were made prior to 2020. But another reason that inflation is not going to go away is because we still have negative real interest rates. Despite the tightening, we still have stimulative monetary policy. Even when the Fed hikes rates to 4% in November, you're still half the inflation rate. You're still discouraging people from saving and encouraging people to take on more debt. You are stoking inflation's fires. You're not putting it out. But even worse than the headline number was the core. Now, remember, the core is more important to the Fed than the headline because it strips out food and energy. Even though food and energy are probably the most important parts of the CPI, the Fed likes to ignore those and focus on everything else. But if you focus on everything else, that 0.6% rise is a big number. But in other words, we're going in the wrong direction. Core CPI is going up, not down. The Fed is getting further away from its goal of returning core CPI to 2%. In fact, we're still more than triple 2%. And again, what investors don't understand is we're not going to go from 8.2% or 8.5% inflation, whatever the peak was so far, all the way back down to 2%. So easy. It's going to take a long time for inflation to return to 2%. Again, I doubt it's going to return to 2% any time during this decade. One piece of news that did come out this week was Pepsi, which reported its earnings, but also revealed that it has increased its prices by 17% year over year. Now, that number dwarfs the official rise in the CPI. It's basically doubled a little bit more than double the official increase in the CPI. Now, I think what's happening at Pepsi is more indicative of what's actually happening to the cost of living than the CPI because Pepsi's prices are real prices. There's no hedonics. There's no substitution. They are what they are. And they've raised prices by 17%. That probably reflects what's going on with inflation. Because remember, Pepsi doesn't want to raise prices. It's trying not to. And in fact, remember early days in the inflation, all of these companies were eating these price hikes. They thought it was transitory. And so they were absorbing the higher costs. They weren't raising prices. If you recall back then, I said that eventually all these companies are going to throw in the towel on transitory inflation and they're going to start raising their prices because they're going to realize that the transitory inflation is permanent and they need higher prices to recover their higher costs. And that is exactly what's going on. So a 17% inflation rate to me is more believable than the government's eight and a half. And what Pepsi is selling is what Americans are buying. This is what's going on with prices. But getting back to these numbers, the inflation rate in 1984, though, was back up to 4.3%. 1985, three and a half. We had one year of below 2% inflation during the entire decade of the 1980s. And that was 1986 when it was 1.9. But the very next year, it shot back up to 3.66. Then 1988, it was 4.08. 1989, it was 4.83. And in 1980, it was 5.4. These are some pretty big numbers, nowhere near 2%. And then if you look at the inflation rates during the 1990s, when we really started to have the change in CPI incorporated, we only had one year during the 1990s, where inflation was below 2%. That was 1998, when it was 1.55%. So these were much higher rates than the 2% that the Fed is hoping to get down to. But the problem is, we have printed so much money since then 
the debts are so much larger that bringing an inflation rate down to the level we had in the 1980s and 1990s or 2000s is nearly impossible. The only time we really had inflation of around 2% was after the 2008 financial crisis. In 2010, we had a 1.64% year. 2013, we had 1.46. 2014, 1.62. 2015 was the absolute bottom. We only had an inflation rate of 0.12%. So as far as the Fed was concerned, that was a very dangerous year because we treaded very close to deflation. We didn't quite get it, but prices barely rose. Then we had a 1.26% rise in 2016. Then we started to have inflation moving back up. 2017, 2018, it was back up to 2.44%. And then we started to head back down in 2019, down to 1.81%. And then 2020 was the last year of sub 2% inflation at 1.23. And then it really started to shoot up in 2021 at 47 But my point is, we're not going down to 2%. The aberration was the inflation of 2% or less that we got following the 2008 financial crisis, but before the COVID crisis. But now what we're going to have is a lot of high inflation to make up for all those years of low inflation. It's a reversion to the mean, except we're really not going to revert to the mean. We're going to revert to something much higher than the mean because of massive and unprecedented money printing that has gone on, not just since COVID, but before COVID. Look at what's happened to the Fed's balance sheet. It's gone from under a trillion before the 2008 financial crisis to almost nine trillion post COVID. And look how many years the Fed was flooding the economy with near free money. And the financial bubbles that have been inflated dwarf anything that had been inflated prior to this time period. So this has been unprecedented monetary inflation, and it's going to be an unprecedented increase in consumer prices that Americans are going to deal with. So this idea that inflation is going to come down is completely wrong. The question is, when are the markets going to come to terms with this reality? Because so far, they're living in fantasy land. Because once again, when we got this hotter than expected inflation number, the immediate reaction was a rise in the dollar and a sell-off in gold. And the same action was repeated on Friday. More dollar strength, more gold weakness. Why? Higher inflation is bad for the dollar by definition. It means the dollar is losing value. It's losing more value than you thought. So if something is losing value faster than you thought, why would you want to buy it even more? The same thing with gold. Inflation is going up, not down. Gold is an inflation hedge. You buy gold when there's inflation. Well, we got more inflation than the markets expected, yet everybody dumped gold. Again, it's the same reason. Every time we get hotter than expected inflation, instead of the markets coming to terms with the reality that the Fed is losing its inflation fight, the markets just believe that the Fed is now going to have to fight even harder to win. But nobody doubts that the Fed will win. And nobody doubts that the Fed will fight as hard as they have to to win. And so since they believe that the Fed has to fight harder They want to buy the dollar and sell gold because fighting harder means even higher interest rates. 